Hello, everybody. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of The Podcrastinators. I'm your host, Cam, and I'm joined by my co-host, Connor. How's it going, everybody? So, today we watched The Wicker Man from 2006, starring Nicolas Cage. Um, also, make sure to check out uh, the Darth Boopy channel for some gameplay we've been putting up there. So Yeah, we just, uh, well, we, we finished Cuphead, but we have a lot of stuff to edit down and post on there. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Great game. Yeah, I think we'll have a bunch of episodes out by the time this goes out. True, true. Um, because according to the YouTube's analytics, most people drop off within the first minute. So I, I thought that we I thought we would plug that before we get started. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so yeah, we, we watched The Wicker Man. This was our second movie for our season two, Nicolas Cage season. Mm-hmm. And we chose this one for a very specific reason, I'm sure... Uh, many of you also know this is the scene with the infamous uh, bee scene. It's the meme where they put the cage over his head and it's... They put the cage over Cage's head. Yeah, and he, he's screaming, The bees! Not the bees! No, the bees! And uh, we found out something very disappointing. Is that you can only see that scene in the unrated version. We yeah. didn't even see it. It's not even in... Yeah, I guess we're jumping right into it here. This... It, I was so fucking disappointed by that. Like, I know. It just the wasn't even in the we movie. The movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we're sorry if you were also disappointed by watching this yeah. movie, but yeah, that's what I wanted to see the whole mm -hmm. time, and we just didn't get to do it. I will say, I was disappointed they didn't have it. This was an awful movie, but I was thoroughly, like, very thoroughly entertained the entire time. Like, this was one of those movies that was so bad that I really enjoyed watching it. It was a good, bad movie. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so in, in the Wikipedia article that, like, in just the plot summary, it says, The villagers tackle and overpower Edward, viciously breaking his legs and prevent him from escaping and torturing him with live bees. And then in parentheses, it says, shown in an alternate version. That's so lame. I wish you would have known that. I know. Going into it. I wish we would have known that too. So we, yeah, we did get the cut. So instead of that scene, they just like kind of show you audio, or they give you the audio of that scene mm -hmm. while they're like walking Nicolas Cage over to be. So it's basically like it's this whole movie is kind of like Midsummer a little bit. Of yeah, Midsummer yeah, yeah. vibey, you know. So there's like this weird society, and then they sacrifice someone at the end, which is just so happens to be Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. Um. But instead of using that scene, they just put audio over like another scene, and it was funny because they like sh they they had the audio of them breaking Nicolas Cage's legs, and he did the SpongeBob, the my leg, <laughs> my leg. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hilarious part. Well, and then because so we did watch the scene because you can find it on YouTube. Obviously, it's a fucking meme everywhere, and mm -hmm. <laughs> like before they put the thing over his head, he's like. I don't believe in your pagan god, you bitches. Yeah. You bitches. <laughs> like, who the fuck wrote this script, man? Yeah. There was a lot of times where just like characters would like blurt out with emotion and you're just like, whoa, <laughs> that gets kind of out of nowhere. Nicolas Cage, you can't say he doesn't care though because he definitely gave this movie his all. Just like he did with Ghost Rider, he definitely gave it his all. He helped produce this movie. Mm, he was and a producer. At the, at the beginning, uh, it said like six different names for people who produced this movie. So six people were actively involved in getting this out there. <laughs> this is a remake of a movie, by the way. I don't know if we've mentioned that. Remake and reimagining of a movie of the same name called The Wicker Man. 1973, I believe. And I think it was five. It's somewhere in there. Yeah. 70s. Yeah. So, but... I was looking at the cast for that one and that doesn't feature like all women. So, so in this movie, it's all women on the Island, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's like a woman's society, I guess. And in the, the original one is, um, the late great Christopher Lloyd, Christopher Lee, who is Count Dooku and Saruman, but he oh, is, about that. he was the, uh, the, Lord Summer Isle or whatever in in the in the original one. Oh, He's like the okay. main leader of this cult. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, because Lord's or sister 
Summer's Summer Isle. Isle. Summer Isle mm-hmm. is the main one of this. Um, there's just a lot of really, really dumb dialogue. My favorite was when he was talking to his wife and she's and she goes, I don't know. And then Nicolas Cage goes, it'll be all right, you know? And then she <laughs> replies, no, I don't know. <laughs> I just had to start bursting out laughing. I was like, Re- that can't be a line that they fucking kept. There, well, there were also other lines where it'd be like, oh, I see you're awake. like, And then Nicolas Cage would just respond with like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of like just one line deliveries like that. Like, yeah. yep. Mm-hmm. It's like, you, how, how, have, you, have you found a dead child? No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, along those lines too. So at the very beginning when it's like the diner scene, and he's like sitting there with his par- or the partner's sitting there and like just the most stilted dialogue delivery ever when the waitress is like, boo. And he goes, <laughs> ah, you startled me. I was getting entranced by this burger. And then she's like, yes, that burger is very entrancing. Where's your partner? <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage is just like right behind him. But they're like not even really partners, right? Cause yeah. he's riding around on the motorcycle yeah. and that guy's not with him. He only talks to that guy one other time in the movie. Okay, so in the, in the beginning of the movie, before Nicolas Cage goes to this island to solve the mystery of mm, like this mm-hmm. missing girl, there is a scene where a big ass truck. Um, it was a semi truck, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like a motorcycle policeman. Yeah, and and he pulls over like this wife and daughter, and then a big semi truck just like fucking plows into them <laughs> yeah. which honestly it was pretty funny it was it was, it was so unexpected so unexpected and then they both die or something like i thought that part was never really explained and it, then he kept having like flashbacks to it and like it never came back maybe it was supposed to be like that was his motivation kind of for like wanting to save uh Rowan, the girl he's searching for on the island because yeah. he was unable to save them. But I thought that that was honestly going to be like part of the horror element yeah, I thought because they were be like, like we never found their bodies in mm-hmm. the crash. Like I thought that they were going to be part of it, like part of him leading up to it. Mm-hmm. But no, I completely agree. And then he had all those like PTSD flashbacks, like where he was like delusional and he saw the girl, and then she just gets run over by the fucking <laughs> semi truck. It happened like four times, and like every time it happens, you're just like, dude. It was also another beautiful part of the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he gets to the island and he convinces the plane guy to bring him there and the people are weird and th- there's like the the sack that clearly has a body in it that's yeah. dripping blood and then he just... They, there's awesome. a little jump scare, one of the worst jump scares ever, and then just like decides to walk away. Mm-hmm. Ah, that was fucking weird. That was weird. The whole movie was just like Nick Cage trying to like search for something, and then he wouldn't find out any answers. And then, like, I don't know, it felt like there were just so many pointless scenes that just went nowhere. And that's, I was like, that's the what thing the with fuck like, was going on? That's the thing with like a movie like Midsummer or any other good movie about like a weird society that you learn more about there's like things that there's there should be like a every single thing should like slightly point you towards like what you're trying to reveal Mm -hmm. like even if it's super cryptic but like i felt excuse me i felt like nothing in this movie like i felt i was confused the entire time like i i didn't know what the fuck was going on nothing like built on itself or ever made sense Mm -mm. none of it was Number ne- it was never like intriguing. I never like wanted to find out more about it. It was yeah. all just like <laughs> really fucking lame. Mm-hmm. And there was some foreshadowing, very very minimal. But there was no like like I said, not nothing, no effective foreshadowing to like help guide you. You know, like when you watch Midsummer, you can find shit. Like, yeah, a second view through and be like, oh, I didn't notice that mm-hmm. before. But in this, I just. Though I, I I'm not even gonna say I don't know. I I know you won't find anything no, else in it. I agree. I wonder why they decided to make this movie. Nicolas Cage had to have been a fan, right? Like a fan <laughs> of the original, maybe. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't know. Well, well we're gonna watch the uh, the original at some point. Yeah, yeah, we put it on the list, <laughs> on the ever growing list. Yep. 
And if you have any movies that you would like us to watch, I mean, pre- please, yeah, let us know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we, we we jump right on it, especially since uh, we don't have the largest <laughs> listener base, so we just it's wanna, getting there. It's getting it's there. It's getting there. It's getting there. But yeah, we want we want to just start being more interactive with people who are listening and enjoying our content. See see what the best ways that we can um, just make good quality content for you guys. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about the <laughs> the book, the like rituals of the ancients? Yeah, that was so lame. It that was, was so, so on the dumb. nose. That that's. That's another thing is like when it started like actually explaining what was going on, it very blatantly just like spelled it out for you. Mm -hmm. Like, why did the book even have to say rituals of the ancients on it? Like it could have been in like some sort of like scribble or like some sort of like ancient language. And that would have been way better than just blatantly having like rituals of the ancients. Don't don't look at this book and then the front cover evil's blood sacrifice rituals <laughs> yeah exactly yeah like oh i wonder what they're doing and then when nick cage actually looks at the book he like it there's the voiceover of explaining exactly what it is mm. like oh some ancient cultures would sacrifice young girls to promote a good harvest and you're like hmm all right, well, we kind of knew that already from whatever the bartender said about, like, mm-hmm. our, we had such a bad harvest. Um, towards, like, the climax of the movie, when shit starts going down, Nicolas Cage just going all jujitsu master on all of them. Yes. He kicked the shit out of that one lady. <laughs> yes, like, across did. the room. It was so funny. And he's just, like hitting all these yeah i think he punched like five women like just the sucker punch yeah (laughs) yeah, he'll just that was hilarious i would watch this movie again i would totally watch this movie again but definitely the unrated cut yeah unrated i would it's i don't know if you're gonna watch this i mean hopefully you guys have watched this going into it or if you're just curious i mean it's not like there's any major spoilers but anyways, um, definitely a better movie to watch with friends, I would say. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would have enjoyed it by myself. It's one of those movies that's like so bad it's good, right? Yeah. At least like something like Ghost Rider or Beast, just like just painfully average. At mm-hmm. least they're like there is some enjoyment you can get out of this. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I had. I definitely like this more than Ghost Rider. Yeah, I definitely liked it more than Ghost K- Rider. Kind of ironic that the first two Nicolas Cage movies we have, he's on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, he's a motorcycle guy. <laughs> that is a good point. I wonder if Nicolas, I mean, I would imagine he rides in real life. I don't know. Yeah, that would be cool. Well, so this movie did very poorly at the box office. It was a $40 million budget and it only made 38.8 million. And I, I don't know. 15% I've, on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> 3.7 on IMDb. I don't know, I maybe mentioned this before, but like usually they say with movies, the uh, budget times two is how much it needs to make back because mm-hmm. usually that's what the marketing budget is. So like, this movie would have had to make 80 million to break even. And yeah. this one barely didn't even make its budget back. So this one was a complete failure. I wonder if it's made its money back through its meme culture. Yeah, that's a good point. Do it. Well, I almost bought it twice <laughs> to just well, see the did, unrated we, cut. We did buy it twice. Today, <laughs> oh, that's true. Because I bought it on my computer and it didn't work. And then you bought it. So they literally sank like what? Like $8 or something from us to watch The Wicker Man. Well, you couldn't even rent the unrated cut. The, you, you, you could only buy it. buy it on Amazon, which was $10. <laughs> it's messed up. I didn't really feel like paying for the, just for the not the bees scene, which I've already seen a million times. It was so disappointing it wasn't in there. I know. I also wish we would have known. <laughs> I yeah, I had I didn't I wasn't even like a thought in my head that there would be in like an unrated version. Ver- I- <laughs> version version. <laughs> well, honestly, I'm kind of happy that it wasn't in it because that gave us something to talk about. Like yeah, had it been in it, we would have just been like, "Oh, that was funny." Like <laughs> It was a good scene, yeah, true. True. <laughs> That's the funny meme I've seen a million times. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a good point. At least, at least it gave us something interesting to talk about. Um, on that note, was, was there anything else that you wanted to mention on this movie? Mm, not really. Like, 
I thought the the masks that they wore at the end were kind of cool. Like one of the girls had like it looked like a bug mask that looked kind of cool, like an ant or something. But yeah, I don't know. But some of them were also really bad. Like the the bee costumes yeah, the that the kids were in. That, yeah, they were kind of funny looking. Mm hmm. And why did I don't know? Maybe she she probably didn't need to speak. But the Rowan character, like the daughter never spoke any words like never had any lines like true what was that about yeah that is kind of weird huh oh and i was also curious why do you think the so like it's nicholas cage's ex fiance or whatever like even though she was behind it the whole time to get nick cage there to sacrifice him for the harvest like when they were sacrificing him she still looked like really sad like mm-hmm. That that just seems so contradictory to me. Like, mm-hmm. why did they make her look so sad? I agree. It did look like she was, like, residing a lot of guilt. But then at the end, when James Franco has his cameo, they're just trying to bring more dudes back here. Yeah. Sacrifice the men. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, this was not a good movie. <laughs> it was an awful movie. It was cut poorly. There was a lot of... The audio was very, very poorly balanced where some things were just like really, really mm, unnecessarily yes. loud. Like the phone calls and stuff at mm-hmm. the beginning, like all the phone <laughs> sound effects were so loud. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Nicolas Cage is easily the best part of this movie. Yeah. Other than that, like, I don't know. There wasn't really any notable shots that I, like really stood out to me. The dialogue was bad. I didn't think the cinematography was awful, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I didn't think there was any shot. I mean, well, there was I nothing you, that was incredibly you, you, you offensive. Po- yeah, but you, you pointed out a couple shots that were a little funky, but like I think in general, I don't know. I guess like maybe the area they shot it in was was so, like balanced or not like you know what I mean. And, mm-hmm. Like the island so was a character it. in itself. Yeah, the- <laughs> <laughs> it made it so they even if they did have like shitty cinematography or shitty shots that like it would kind of like help hide it just because of nature there were a couple scenes with like the establishing shot of the island in the morning that i thought looked cool actually like just the the... water didn't look like water is what i thought yeah i don't know i thought that's what that's what i liked about it though was like i was like the water looks really cool there like Mm -hmm. i i wonder if those are fake like i wonder if those shots are fake (laughs) it's very very possible um so uh what what is next what is, yeah, that's actually is... a good question. I don't know. Let me let me pull up our list. <clears throat> that was a big one. That was one I was very excited to watch. This, yeah, and I'm very disappointed that it, that uh, there wasn't the the thing the 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 B scene. Okay, mm-hmm. so for next time we will be watching Wild at Heart. This is actually a David Lynch movie. Oh, I I'm, didn't know David Lynch did one with Nicholas Cage. Yeah, I've. Never seen this one, too. So I'm excited to watch this movie. Well, you heard that, guys. Wild at Heart. Please watch it in anticipation for our next episode. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so, so much for listening. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, we'll catch you all later.